So now we're ready to look at the disorders related to blood vessel structure. And therefore, of course, if they're not, if the structure's hampered, then the function of that blood vessel is going to be uh, limited as well. And so things like aneurysm, varicose veins, and atherosclerosis, which could lead to heart attacks or strokes, will be covered. An aneurysm is basically a blowout of the artery. It can happen not only in the aorta as pictured here, but it can happen in the brain or even in the arm are some of the common locations for them. Um, again, this is kind of a blowout or a weakening of the blood vessel wall. Again, this is going to be in an a in a artery. And if that should rupture, then of course you have internal bleeding and that of course could kill the person. Um, People may have aneurysms all their life and not even realize it. If they are diagnosed, then the surgeon can go in and repair those um, aneurysms either by pinching them off, depending on which blood vessel we're talking about, or uh, by putting in a stent to give some kind of reinforcement to the uh, weakened area. Or another possibility is to um, cut out the aneurysm and put in a graft. Varicose veins is another disorder related, of course, to the veins. This is where the valves don't function properly uh, and therefore the blood will go the wrong direction and end up sinking and sitting in your legs more. Uh, and then for you get these kind of weird um, looking veins on the surface of your legs. People who are obese, obese or pregnant are more susceptible to varicose veins simply because of that, all that abdomen, abdomen um, interfering with the return of blood to the abdominal cavity and, and up to the heart. Atherosclerosis is a buildup of plaque in the artery. It's a type of arterial sclerosis. Arterial sclerosis is technically hardening of the arteries. So atherosclerosis, because you're building up plaque in the wall of that artery, um, you're banking it harder. Everybody is going to end up with arterial sclerosis. As we age, our arteries lose their elasticity. Um, to some extent, we all end up with atherosclerosis, but hopefully the atheroma or that plaque doesn't build up too uh, much and then interfere with blood flow. So atherosclerosis would be considered to be the most common type of arterial sclerosis. Now to prevent it, don't do things like smoke. Um, make sure you lose weight or you have the proper weight to exercise. Healthy diet, don't eat high saturated fats, those types of things. Uh, drugs also can help in um, reducing the plaque or at least reducing the threat of a blood clot associated with the plaque. So things like statins uh, that lower what are called LDLs, these are the bad cholesterol that tend to build up the size of the plaque. And so we want to reduce the amount of LDLs in circulation, thereby uh, limiting the size of that plaque or anti-inflammatories, which keeps the plaque more stable and you don't end up getting a rough surface on the plaque uh, that could lead to platelet plug formation and therefore coagulation and a blood clot. Aspirin also works as an anticoagulant, again, to reduce the chances of platelets sticking to the plaque or a tissue plasminogen activator, which is often put directly into a thrombosis that may have formed on the plaque or a blood clot, remember, is a thrombosis and that forms on the plaque and that tissue plasminogen activator activates plasminogen to form plasmin and remember plasmin dissolves clots. So when a person comes in to the hospital, say with a heart attack due to a, um, due to a blood clot associated with one of the coronary arteries or say a stroke, um, you can administer tissue plasminogen activator to help get rid of that blood clot and hopefully restore blood flow. If a person has a heart attack, then how severe that heart attack is depends on which coronary artery is blocked. If, for example, a 
atherosclerotic plaque forms up here and associated thrombo thrombosis forms here. That means blocking all blood flow any farther downstream. So a large section of the left ventricle would be affected by that. And therefore this entire section of the heart is at risk of not receiving oxygen and therefore could end up dying or necrosis and uh, cause a heart attack. If a heart attack did happen at point A, that's typically it's called a widowmaker because that's just too much um, blockage and too large a section of the heart for the person to be able to live through that. If the blockage came down here or there's an atherosclerotic plaque forming here, then it's just again just downstream. So now we have a very uh, much smaller area that's getting affected. So the person's going to have a heart attack, uh, but the tissue damage from that uh, blockage is much less severe. Strokes can come of different types. Ischemic strokes are the most common type of stroke. These are uh, where the arteries to your brain are narrowed or blocked and can severely reduce blood flow. That's what's ischemia um, to that area of the brain that's being serviced by that blood vessel. There are basically two types of ischemic strokes, either thrombotic strokes. These are the blood clots that can occur associated often with plaque buildup, as you can see here in the carotid um, artery, or embolic stroke whereas an embolism causes a blockage of the blood flow into that area. Um, say it could have been a, a blood clot that broke off and lodged farther downstream and blocking that area of the brain. A um, hemorrhagic stroke is typically when the blood vessel bursts and you have internal bleeding into the uh, brain. Now to repair um, atherosclerotic plaques or, or areas where blood clots or plaques have formed to open up those blood vessels. Um, there are a couple options. One is called a balloon angioplasty and stent. Here, for example, they, they, here's a plaque forming here. They insert a catheter that has a basically a balloon in it and they blow up that balloon. That balloon pushes the plaque off to the side and therefore you can see now with the uh, catheter removed, blood flow has been restored, as you can see here. Often with that balloon, though, they put in a stent to make sure the plaque stays out. And that stent's just basically a chicken wire. So again, a catheter is inserted. You blow up the balloon to push the plaque off to the side, and then you leave the stent in place. So that reinforces that area and keeps that plaque pushed off to the side. Another possibility is what's called a coronary artery bypass graft or cabbage. In this, what they do is they're just going to reroute the blood. So let's say there's a blockage here. And so they may take the mammary artery, which is an artery that heads off to your lungs. Um, that's kind of a redundant circulation. And so we can live without that one. So they'll just reroute it and attach it so it attaches past the point of the blockage. That way the blood can get down here to these tissues by going out this artery through the mammary artery and then to those tissues. Or they could take the saphenous vein, which is a vein located in your leg. It's kind of like an extra little vein um, that we don't need. We still have a femoral vein to bring blood back from our legs. And so they'll take the saphenous vein, turn it around to make sure the, vein, the valves are pointing in the right direction, and then use that to bypass, say, from here down. If the blockage is here, they're going to just attach that saphenous vein past the blockage. And again, that can blood can then go to the more distant ends and serve um, that, those tissues. So that's going to be ending our little look at some of the disorder, disorders associated with uh, blood vessels. The next thing we're going to do, though, is look at local control of tissue perfusion.